Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Stardom Review. I am your co-host, Undersea, right over here. It's the angry princess herself. It's Melball. How you doing, angry Melball? She is furious. She is furious as F. But okay, she's, she's not, here. She's, she's happy. The, she's the fast and furious princess tonight. It's she Melball. is. Slapa, 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 slapa. <sighs> How are we, you doing, my friend? Doing pretty good. Uh, can't complain. Watch some been watching some good wrestling uh just had a really great weekend with my friends as we chatted chatted about on the last show but no just just great times good times for all Mm -hmm. all get to hang out with my friends good life life is good uh i've got a whole week eight days off coming up soon which i which i wish i could say was gonna be good for this show but i've got family in town and I'm going to be spending time with my family while they're here. So next week's going to be a little bit spotty. So we're going to try and knock it as much as we can in the next few days here. Well, I'll be on, we'll be on for a couple shows. Like I know we'll be able to sneak away to do a couple shows next week, but mostly it's going to be spot. Yeah. Mostly started because again, no new Japan until like the eighth, I think. So we're, we're, we're in the clear for new Japan for another couple weeks. So yes. Yes. So you're taking vacation next week and I'm taking the vacation the week after. So it's, it's going to be a little, it's going to be a little iffy. And then the week after, some Andre alone, and that's fine. That's what I was going to say. The week at the sec, the second full week of September, you'll probably get some just me jumping on here, talking some New Japan, talking some stardom. Uh, I'm going to save the big stuff, obviously, to do with Mel. So don't don't worry about that. (laughs) All the big stuff. All the big stuff. But uh, we are here to talk the Stardom Midsummer Fest show. But before we get into that, I want to thank all of you, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank all the great support we've been getting from everybody. Uh, you've all been so supportive and loving. Just get, we're loving getting to interact with all you guys on the channel through the comments and everything. We really appreciate it. The subscriber growth has been awesome. We really like. We really appreciate it. And now we're going to be looking at to try and bring you guys some content through audio too so you yes. we're gonna be this is, this is a slow rollout for it but we're gonna be tra- we're gonna be trying to bring out audio content soon with so astro wanna... pizarro helping us at the helm with that one thank you to the beautiful natural yes very big thank you to the natural because it's a lot of work and she she's really very is. experienced with it i understand some of it because i have a buddy who's told me about it my buddy adam who's pretty successful with his podcast stuff, but I'm just his way, way. He does it is slightly different than the way I think we're going to go. So well, we're going to, we're going to make our way through this slowly, but sure. Slowly, but dang, surely. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to give just before we get going a uh, big shout out to Hypertext Harvest uh, for dropping a comment in there. Say, telling us what that little tag from Starlight Kid was. Oh, yes, saying, on her mask. Saying it was like the one she put in front of her opponent there after the loss or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, divine punishment complete. So thank you, Hypertext Harvest. We really do appreciate you giving us a little bit of translation. Yes, save that one. We're going to need to refer back to that one. <laughs> oh, very much so. And then all the other great people, Bob, Bobby Batito, Ray Ray Z, Joe. Joe Demetrius Frank. Thank you all, all, everybody. And Jason Rutledge, too. I want to thank everybody for all the great support that they've been doing with our channel. (laughs) (laughs) You can't hear that, but hopefully you felt it. But, and uh, so please like the channel. uh, If you can, subscribe to it. Uh, Like, uh, comment down below because we love hearing from you. And uh, I can't remember the last thing. What is it? I'm not. Sir. I don't know. I know there's one more thing. Sir. Hit, hit ring that notification bell, ladies and gentlemen. Ding dong. Hello. Shut yeah, up. ding Hello. dong. <laughs> ah, I love it. <laughs> but we are gonna get into it. We're gonna talk some midsummer fest. And th- yeah. the poster for the show is just some legendary female Japanese wrestlers. And I'm gonna give a little rundown on each one when we get to their matches. But yeah, um, now you, I, I'll bet I stole this. I stole the vi- the picture for of these ladies for the thumbnail for this video because it was just like perfect. <laughs> it looks perfect, yeah. That's why I'm like, I'll just use it. Mm-hmm. So we kick it off with a uh, three way match. It's M- Miss Crazy, the the Demon of My Dreams, Miss Fuki and Death versus May Sarah versus Hanako. Is that um, Ripley? Pardon? Is that your Rhea Ripley? Isn't that her? No, oh, Rhea Ripley's theme song. Rhea Ripley. Sleep, breathe, the demon in your Rhea... dreams. 
<laughs> Rhea Ripley means a lot of <laughs> much things to me. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Oh dear! I I, it's not a she, Rhea Ripley is not nightmare inducing. Let's just say that. I'm not. Did say. she? I mean, it depends on what you like. <laughs> if yeah. you're scared of her, you might. If you're like a hobbit sis, you might be a little terrified of Rhea Ripley. I'm not. I'll just say this. I'm not scared of Rhea Ripley. Let's just say that. <laughs> Same. Relatable. Yeah. Relatable. Yeah. She seems like a really chill dude. Girl. Uh, May Sarah coming out with the balloons. Uh, oh. Hanako and uh, May Sarah do the handshake, but Yuki's giving them that the death, if Yuki can death mm -hmm. thing at them. Um, Hanako wanting to test the strength, but she's so much taller than both, so they end up both stomping her feet and attacking mm -hmm. her. Uh, Hanako uses May Sarah to knock Fuki out of the reach. She picks her up and like throws her, like smashes her beat, feet first into Fuki. Mm -hmm. May then May literally climbs up her and gets into the rear naked choke. I I was really, really impressed by that. Um, Relatable too, as a little person. Like sometimes that's the only thing that you can do to kind of protect yourself. If you can maneuver yourself there, it's pretty easy to sink in. Yeah, Fuki gets the uh, newspaper, then comes in, and goes gets a Hanako assisted rope walk, and then jumps off with the paper to the head. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Hanako holding like Fuki back by the forehead, just like mm, no, and she's like swinging. Then she hits her with the boots twice, um, and gets a pin, but it's broken up. Hanako slams May, and then she gets a double single leg crab on both Fuki and May Sarah. But they both yeah. do eventually get to the ropes. I really like the the difference in that. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Fuki pokes the eyes of May, then Hanako, and then she calls for the Brain Buster Death. She goes, Brain Buster Death! To just to get in Hanako, but Hanako just suplexes her, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> Irony. And then May and Hanako fight, and May gets the wheelbarrow roll up to Hanako and gets the win. Yeah, yeah. You definitely mentioned like all the fun stuff that I mentioned. <laughs> um, but May Sarah, man, that little May May, she knows how to move, move. Holy heck. Um, especially at the end sequence there with Hanako, she really turned up that high speed. And like, it was, I wanted to write down everything she was doing, but she was just doing it so quickly. It was impossible, like even pausing it and trying to, okay, what did she do in the ADHD? I forgot instantaneously. But, you know, yep. tomato, tomato. Um, I really enjoyed it. I wrote down May turned up the Sonic shoes in that final sequence. She was just go, 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 go. She was barely on the floor for a split second before she was popping back up. It's like the girl is made of rubber. She mm -hmm. bounces off everything. It's incredible. But then her, like, her charisma is just, it's so mm -hmm. adorable. She's just, like, even though sometimes with Suzu, you do see her kind of do that kind of bad girl stuff tendency, almost a way to tie esque. Um, it's it's forgivable at this point. I feel like she's so adorable that she could just be like, "Oopsie," and I'd be like, "Yeah." Well, I, I I I love her 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 her, her charisma, her everything, and when she's when she's matched with Suzu. Because they are so different in the way they're – they both have incredible charisma, mm -hmm. but it's completely different in how they each portray it. And yes. I love just the contrast in them, and I it just – it's such a perfect pairing. Mm -hmm. This and is why I definitely feel, despite your, your objections to this, that's why I feel Micah fits perfectly. She fits perfectly. And I'm not going to lie. We can discuss later, I believe, in this uh, show, Suzu mm -hmm. and uh, Micah. We will. <laughs> we will. Yes, we will. We move on to the mix, the mismatch team of the night. Um, it wow. is the team of the sisters, Hanan from Stars, Hina from Queen's Quest, and Rina from Oedo Tai, taking mm -hmm. on Lady C from Queen's Quest, Wakaskiyama from Club Venus, and Yuna Mizumori from Cosmic Angels. I think every team was represented here. Oh, my, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, uh, ooh, uh, God's Eye. Oh, God's Eye. But I, they, they don't really have a junior at this point. That's the thing. Other than, yeah. Tomoaki, I think, is. Yeah, she's barely there. Her sister. I, yeah. 
But they're barely there. They're resting <laughs> the places. Uh, so it's the sisters I mean, versus the mismatch. always about people who are barely there. Come on, my guy. Yeah, it's the sisters versus the mismatch. Uh, Waka back in her classic gear. Um, I didn't care for it. I don't like her old gear. I, I was, yeah, now that we've gotten a taste of what's in this picture, I, I don't want to go back to the Waka tits. Well, there's that, and then there's another set of gear she had in between the Waka tits and this one that I like better than the Waka tits. But, yeah. Uh-huh. That's how yeah. you're describing it, so I'm going to say it. Uh, Yuna do, trying to do a double slingshot to see in Waka, and it just doesn't work. It's like I mean, bless bad. her enthusiasm. Oh, it was just, it was so bad. Um, it, it was hilariously awful. Yeah, Hina sweeps Lady C and tags in Rena, who gets the corner knees and a drop kick for two. Uh, Waka gets in, Rena and Waka are trading shots, and Waka gets the oblivion out of the ropes. Mm-hmm. Um, Waka tries the straight jacket hanging thing to Hanan in the corner, but she fights it off and they brawl. Waka gets the sunset flip for two. Hanan then gets the running famouser for two. Uh, Waka slams Hanan, but Rena st- like ends up like stomping on Waka's back to break up the pin. Um, Hanan gets a roll up into a crucifix on Waka Skiyama, and she gets the win. Mm-hmm. And then Rena kicks Hanan in the ass when they're all standing up. And I just laughed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it was hilarious to me because I feel like she was trying to play back to her Oedo tie roots in that which i found funny because one of my notes in this was that she was not wrestling in this match like an away to tire she was actually wrestling like not having any of the away to tie girls in her corner to really kind of rile her up she was straight out wrestling with her sisters it was phenomenal um the triple judo toss that the the sisters all performed on, we'll call team mismatch over there, um, was just so crisp, so good. Um, Hina hitting the everything is Hina on Lady C was was pretty good. And Lady C, man, like it's been a hot minute since we've seen her. She's she's been she's been a little absentee, but um, from the ring anyway. I think I've seen her a few times on the outside, but she hasn't been um, featured mm-hmm. as heavily in the shows. Um, I've been missing her and seeing her back in the ring was a joy. Um, I love her gear. It gives me Beetlejuice vibes. Um, and yeah. You, uh, you thought the same thing, right? I, I yeah, thought the same right? thing. It, yeah. I liked it. I really yeah. like it, but I also like that spooky shit. Um, yeah. I, I was actually surprised that Hanan picked up on the win on this, but then should I really be surprised from the win that she picked up? On the last show. Probably I not. Really, I just really wish it wasn't Waka getting pinned every goddamn time. Yeah, uh, I would have liked to... I hate to say it because I love Yuna, but I think I would have liked to have seen Yuna take the pin on this one. Yeah, um, just because Waka, it, it's like they had this incredible story with her, and then they just dropped it once it ended, and I don't like that. It, it, the story needs to continue for Waka because it makes me scared for Utami, who has also just returned from excursion. And she's there's some questionable things that have been happening up until this point with her and her win-loss ratio. You know, she just lost to Azumi, which, you know, not that great for Azumi, but you, she is considered, it would be like Hiromu Takahashi defeating Naito. Mm-hmm. You know, it, 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 they're two different size classes to me. So... That, that has, for me, taken some wind out of Utami's sails. Um, mm. But we're also going to talk about Utami later in the show. We will. And we're going to move on to my favorite tag team, Rose Gold. Uh, Mariah May and Mina Shirakawa taking on Megan Bain and Tekla. Um, Tekla and, May, and Mariah May at the start just wooing off and then doing the poses at each other. And then the gif you sent me of Mina Shirakawa coming in and just shaking her titties. And they even shook the camera with it, too. I mean, wow. booby son, booby son. When those yeah. things start boobying, the earth I, starts shaking. I literally call it the booby son shake. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Do you want to know what I wrote down for, for my note on this? What's that? The beginning spot was for the boys and lesbians. 
Oh, so you enjoyed it. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, <laughs> no. I haven't struck out with the guy so much that I'm really wed- willing to hop the fence yet. yet. But we're getting close. Yet. Um, they get Bane in, and, like, Mina flips the front. She has these the little things that hang down. Like, oh, yes, the little one. And, like, thing. Mina flips the first one and goes, ooh. And then May does it to the back one. She goes, ooh. But then, like, tech, and then... Bane just like no, just grabs him and smashes him face. Oh, they together. both freaked out for her when they lifted the the butt flap, as it will. You know why? Yeah. She was pretty much wearing a thong, and goddamn, is that woman built like a freaking brick shit house? She is so strong, so powerful. But then she's got such a nice butt. Yep. And yeah, I haven't hopped the fence yet. Uh, but maybe Bane can- could make me. Sucker catches Mina in the corner, does the over the top rope head scissors. Uh, Bane's in. She slams Mina, then picks up Thecla and slams Thecla onto Mina, and Bane gets a two count. But Bane, yeah, uh, Bane is just happy to use her her her, her, her partners as weapons. And they might <laughs> as well make themselves useful, right? Mina starts kicking the legs of Bane, but Bane like catches one and just picks him and yeets her over her head. Um. May goes, gets the top rope drop kick to Bane, unloads forearm, but Bane's like not getting really effective. Uh, Club Venus double team her with strikes, and they try to go for that dual sweep thing they do, but they don't. They don't. It just doesn't happen, and Bane takes out Mina with a lariat. And then, they, they don't. They just, they don't. just don't. They just, they just do it. <laughs> and then uh, she hits the swinging her Nagi onto Mariah May. Um, oh. Thecla hits the boot to the head and the ropes to, to Mariah May. And that May cuts her off up top. Hits the Trish Stratus Rana, followed up by the Barbie blade. But then Thecla hits the spear. Yeah. Uh, May gets the TKO after, uh, after Mina hits a roundhouse kick to Thecla. And uh, she gets a two count. They hit the electric chair bulldog combo uh, for two uh, to that club, but then Bane comes in and Germans May out of the ring. Like, Germans her, and she goes flying out of the ring. Mm-hmm. Um, but Mina then sends Bane out to the floor, hits a high cross off the top. Uh, they get back, May and Thecla back in the ring. May goes for the happily ever after tombstone. Uh, after Thecla went for the spider pose, she like grabs her and just picked her up into the happy level mm-hmm. after. But uh, Thecla rolls rolls her through into a pin for two, but then May reverses the pin and she gets a one, two, three. Rolls gold gets the win. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. Here's the thing. This was just a fun match. I really didn't mm-hmm. care who was winning. Um, I did. I just enjoyed the ride. <laughs> it was a fun little match it had everything that i wanted it had strikes it had technicality it had power moves it had comedy it was great and then of course it had like you know the beautiful women that are standing before us what i'm not liking is that if i'm not mistaken which i don't think i am the only champion in this match took the pin Okay, so, so Rose Gold grabs good. Waka. So Rose Gold grabs Waka, and they go chance for the artist titles. I'm down with that. Don't be ridiculous. Waka's on a losing streak again. Okay, um, go, they go grab Zena then. Whatever. Zena, Jesse, bring back Zaya as the original trio. Whatever. I think Zaya's in America right now and trying to convince Club Venus to come over for a visit, which I wouldn't be mad about. But what the point I'm trying to get to is that, number one, you should not have the only champion in the match take a loss to a non-champion. Number two, why the frick is Thecla on a losing streak? She's taken a lot of high, high, important pins. Cause, cause she, she lost that tag match with Julia. She, she lost another match before that we spoke on a show before. It, it, it's mm, it's not the making sense. Well, I, it makes sense if you look at it this way. Tekla is not in the five star Grand Prix. Bane is a project for this company. She ain't gonna take a pin. She ain't taking a. She took the pin from to Dam, but she ain't gonna p- take a pin in another match for a while. Mina and May are both still alive in the five star Grand Prix, so neither of them right now, because they're still alive in that tournament, are not taking a pin. Then time limit, draw it. Don't take make the champion take the loss because for me, it's devalued the titles. 
It doesn't it, to me. It doesn't. But again, that's I just look at it from that perspective. So when you have one team member who is one of the champions consistently taking losses, that's a problem. That is a problem. If you don't look at that as a problem, my guy, come on. It, it tells me that they don't deserve to have the titles. And yeah. we both know that Thecla is more than capable of being a champion. Oh, very much so. And if in reality, I wish it was if anybody was taking that pin from that trio, I wish it was my Sakurai. <laughs> Realistically Arguably. speaking, it would make sense on the level of veteran and experience, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't my Sakurai, it was Thecla. Mm -hmm. And like I get that Megan Bain is the project, and that makes sense, but that being said. She probably should have taken the win. I get that Mina and Mariah are both in the Grand Prix, but they've they've lost and won. Hell, they lost and won to each other. I understand, but I'm just saying during tournaments, people in tournaments don't take losses. It's what well, is they should have thought about that before booking the match. I, I don't I'm not disagreeing with you on that factor. I just don't think it hurts Thecla as much as you're you actually are saying. But but in my in my eyes, in my eyes, I it's, it's in my eyes. I'm not hmm. saying you're wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong. I swear. I'm not saying you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Micah and Suzu Suzuki versus Ami Sare and Ida. Ami gets the speed chops, so Suzu stops her. They all fight. Uh, Ida and Ami get the speed chops on Suzu and Micah, and they both get the double gorilla chop. Mm -hmm. uh, that big. I think I call it the double gorilla chop because, you know, Ida and her gorilla thing. Yeah. Right? Uh, Suzu then get, uh, gets the drive-by kick to Ami, and then the running knee to the back of the head. She stopped up top, and Ami gets the Argentine backbreaker and puts Suzu in the corner and splashes her. High angle crab by Ami to Suzu, but she gets rolled up off a power bomb attempt. Uh, hard German by Suzu, but Ami hit, then comes back hits a hard-ass lariat. Uh, Suzu gets the spear to Saida. Micah in with Laris to Ida. Then Ida gets some to Micah, but Micah drops Ida with another huge lariat. Uh, Ida slips out of the Micah power slam, chop blocks in a knee, and hits the sliding D. Uh, rolling De Death Valley driver by Ami, and she picks up Ida, tosses her onto Micah with with an elbow drop, and Ida gets two. Micah and the end of the match is Micah and Ida trade shots, but Ida drops Micah. Then Micah comes back. She drops Ida, then hits the Michinoku driver two for the win. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. This was a fun match for me. I really enjoy seeing Suzu and Micah together. Mm -hmm. uh, another mismatch match, if you will. Because um, Micah, obviously, DDM, uh, Suzu's kind of what free agent, we'll say. Um, Ida and Stars and, and Ami in in mm -hmm. God's Eye. Mi was Mirai on the show? Yes. Was Mirai on the show? No. I just realized that. <laughs> anyway, um, I really enjoyed the um, the machine gun chops that 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 Ami and and Asaya did to Suzu and and Micah. It's nice to see them kind of uniting a little bit, doing mm. similar moves. Um, I definitely felt, I think it's just based on how much longer they've been working together, that Suzu and Micah were definitely more cohesive, we'll say. Um, mm -hmm. Ami and Ida did work very, very well together, but they didn't work as well, I felt, as as Suzu and Micah. Um, I really enjoyed that final kind of showdown between Ida and Micah where they were just trading shots, trading lariats, just leveling each other. These two were just playing so well off of each other. I absolutely loved it. And then afterwards, I wish I could understand what they were saying. Ida really frustrated getting in Micah's face and Micah kind of yeeting her <laughs> um, a little bit there. Then having words with her partner, Suzu, after and uh, taking a little... Um, we'll say page out of nasty Nate Nixon's book. And they started tenderizing each other's titties before leaving. Mm -hmm. Didn't understand what was going on there, but it seemed to be jolly good fun. <laughs> I don't <laughs> you were know what smiling. To say. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what to say from that, but okay. 
I, well, like they they laughed about it. It seemed like a rib, like a, just an inside joke between the two of them that they just had going on. Yeah, Micah's chest sure matched her hair and freaking outfit after taking those machine gun chops. So let me tell you, ouchies. Mm -hmm. We move on. Uh, final match of before we get into the other stuff. Uh, stars <laughs> Kokumo and Mayu Otani versus Godzai Saki Kashima and Siri. Uh, Saki and Kaguma high five at the start, but Kaguma picks her up and slams her, and stars end up getting the double team. Uh, Sa Saki gets the head scissors to Kaguma and dodges a lariat hits and hits a beautiful back fist. Looked really good. Mm -hmm. uh, Siri in with the strikes and the kicks, hits the top rope famouser for two. Uh, Kaguma gets Siri in the bear clutch, but Saki gets uh, hits her with. She pulls off the corner pad and hits her with it. Very much not God's I like. Uh, yeah. I thought that also. Yeah. Um, and they e and then uh, they each get a submission onto Koguma and Maya Ibutani, and uh, they pose with the turnbuckle while holding the submissions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish just... I knew what that said. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, we, have, we have somebody that's already translated for us. Maybe, you know, please let some us some more know. translation. <laughs> um, uh, corner hop into the double stomp by Saki to my or to Mayu. Uh, Saki hits the STO, or then, uh, wait, Suri hits the STO, and Saki gets to stomp off the top for two, then hits the Angel's Wings for two. Uh, Mayu reverses the M Prettier from Saki, and then Koguma runs in and hits a cutter, and then they uh, they do this wheel, the wheelbarrow flip slam, uh, yeah. for, and uh, but they do that. Uh, Saki reverses the crucifix into Kishikase by Mayu and gets a two. Uh, then Koguma comes in, DDT Siri. Uh, Mayu, Mayu goes up and stars hit the sandwich top rope drop kick. Very mm -hmm. interesting there. And Mayu applies the standing dragon sleeper, and Saki Kashima is forced to submit. Yes, let's talk about Saki. Um, I got excited when new music hit and she came out and I saw a gold robe and I was like, oh, we got new gear. We did not. We no. did not get new gear. We just got a new robe and new music. We're working on it. We're working hey, towards hey, the new. She group. got the new robe. Maybe the next is a new pair, new skirt. Next step. Then, then a new top, and then new hair, and then. Just... She already got the new hair. She went dark. Yeah, but she's got to change the style up. They they actually both went dark. Now that I think about it, both both Suri and Saki have their natural dark Ooh, hair now. Ooh, Saki is co is co is corrupting Suri. I mean, could you imagine though? Little touch of little touch of evil in in Suri. Could you imagine? Could you imagine mm. what she's doing right now? That'd be pretty cool. Um, I enjoyed Saki doing the kaguma, kaguma, kaguma at the uh, the beginning. Um, attacking Kaguma with the turnbuckle was just hilarious. Um, yeah, the submissions and posing with the turnbuckle. Now, what was the sign? Because I, if I'm not mistaken, was that a strong spirit sign that she brought in on the intro also? I don't remember. Because she is being advertised, or at that time was being advertised um, as a um, wrestler card for strong spirit. So I'm wondering if maybe that was an advertisement for that, which awesome. That's the first person I would have seen sensationalizing that. I've got her, I've got her wrestler card. I do too. I, I were you as lucky as I was and got her on the first draw because that was like the first time I. Well, ever no, did I, that. I've ha I got her off of my Iwatani draw like a few weeks ago. Is when I got her. Let me tell you, it took me sixteen draws to get Micah. Oh really? I was not happy. It only took me like, <laughs> it only took me like three or four to get Micah. Me to be upon you here with Micah. Yeah, lucky bugger. Um, back to the match. I was surprised that Saki took the win on this. Again, um, not the only champion in this, but the obvious one to me would have been Koguma taking the loss to Suri. Um, yeah. However, or even Isaki, because Saki did just defeat her for 
uh, to retain her high speed title. So to me, it kind of seemed weird to see Saki taking the loss, mm-hmm. but like maybe it'll be um, part of her evolution. Maybe there will be something that comes out of that. We'll have to wait and see. I'm hoping so. I just don't want them to drop the ball like they done with Waka. Hmm. Well, we'll see. We'll see. But at least this was a really good match. I'd like the next yeah. one. This fucking sucked. As I actually much as took I, a lot of notes on this one. <laughs> I did, but it all fucking sucked. Like you know what? It it, it wasn't all a suckery. It was just like one or two people really creating the most suckery and everyone else trying to not fall to the suckery, but still ending up falling to the suckery. Yeah. My biggest problem was Tom Matsumoto. She, like, she, like, I understand she was very physically limited. Oh, yes. But fuck. Dude, she didn't, like, when when she wasn't tagged in, she just leaned against the corner. She didn't even go. She wouldn't be able to get back in the ring if she left. I understand. But (laughs) but the fact is she kept just coming in and smacking people with kendo sticks. And I was just like, fuck, man. Like, Let's get into it, man. uh, So we have Kiyoke Onoe. Uh, and uh, uh, teaming up with Azumi, Mio Amasaki, Utami, and Hayashishida. So Kiyoki Inoue uh, is a pretty legendary wrestler in Japan. Uh, from Japan. She wrestled in that 1995 Women's Survivor Series match in the WWF. Mm-hmm. Um, she helped create uh, the promotion Neo Japan Ladies uh, Pro Wrestling. And then she also helped create World Women Pro Wrestling Diana, which currently runs to this day. So mm-hmm. she she has had a big influence on professional wrestling and Japanese she professional has a wrestling. Resume. And then she's t- they're taking on Dump Matsumoto, which is my favorite goddamn name, uh, Oedotai, Natsukatora, and Ruaka, and Zap. Um, so Dump Matsumoto, uh, again, legendary Japanese wrestler, 62 years old. Um, yeah, she she wrestled back in the day with Bull Nakano and a lot of others, worked for All Japan. Uh, in the All Japan Women's Promotion, uh, uh, All Japan Women's Champion, um, WWA World Tag Team Champion in uh, in All Japan Women's. Uh, yeah, again, just kind of a legendary figure in wrestling. But again, oh. very lim- very old, very limited. Um, this and then she explains Tora to me. Yeah, kind of, she's kind of the old version of Tora. It's well, not, not even that. Tora was dressed up. Like, she's wearing her regular gear, like, in this picture. But she she was rocking the new hairstyle, so she had the partial shave above mm-hmm. the, the ear there that a lot of, you know, girls are doing. She was rocking a new do. She was rocking her usual makeup. But girl had so much highlighter on her face, she glowed. Yeah, I, I loved it. I'm pretty sure it's a tri- like more of a tribute to Dub Matsumoto. And then her exactly. partners, she, her pat- she showed up because her legendary hero was probably there. Yeah, and then their partner, Zap, is actually uh, wrestling named Tomoka Wata- Watanabe. Um, she wrestled, wrestled under Zap, Zap T, Candy Number 2. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's worked in all Japan, a lot of different wrestling. I worked for the was in the Survivor Series tag team elimination match at Survivor in WWF 95. Uh, works for Marvelous, Diana, uh, Pro Wrestling Waves. Like, like, she still works for Marvelous. So, but she was actually quite decent in this match. She, oh, yeah, she, she was great. Former two time All Japan Women's Champion, uh, mm-hmm. two time All Pacific Champion from All Japan, uh, former uh, two time or three time All Pacific Champion, two time tag team champ. So, again, mm-hmm. these women have a lot of history. It's just mm-hmm. like dump was the worst part of this match. And I'm sorry, she took a dump on this match. Um, yeah, Come dump on, starts man. the match attacking Queen's Quest. The way ties follow suit, they all fight to the floor. She's like tossing Miu into the chairs, hitting her with a kendo stick. Um, Dump gets a camel clutch in the ring, uh, pulling on Miu's hair, and as Oedo Ty's coming in and kicking her and everything. Um, yeah. Zaps I in. I have hits. opinions on that one. Yeah. Um, Miu tries to German Dump, but Dump just falls backwards onto her and gets a pin for two. <laughs> like, fuck. Uh, Kiyoko comes in, taking down, eventually takes down Dump with a bunch of lariats. 
Uh, Rock is in, choking Mio in the corner. Mio fights back with a cross out of the corner. Uh, Kyoka and Raka brawl. Azumi comes in to help. And Kyoka tosses Azumi off the top onto Rewaka. Um, Raka reverses the Rainmaker from Utami into a fisherman suplex. Uh, we had a tie uh, uh, in the other team. They all they they they, they all had a tie team in others attack utami and uh, zap hits a splash off the second to utami and gets a two count uh kyoko helps utami in the ring and she, and she gets a lariat on zap for two uh dump hits zap with the kendo stick uh and utami gets the german on zap dump hit her like zap accidentally but uh queen's quest they hit the quad drop kick the torah but dump just comes in and hits me with the kendo stick again um, and in a way, tie the team attacks, but Kyoko cuts off Tora up top, hits a superplex, uh, and then Miyu gets a sit up pedigree for two on Tora. Uh, dump and Tora hit Miyu with the with like a garbage can, and then they clothesline her with the kendo stick, and then they double missed her, and Tora gets the Death Valley Driver for the win. This match, but like I really wrote, this was one of the rare stardom bad matches, like. It was just pure nonsense. Dump just ruined everything for me. I'm sorry. Dump ruined its match for me. Like, I, I understand she's a legend, but fuck. <laughs> and then, and then let me, I'll just get to the aftermatch before we go on. Dump comes out, starts attacking the ref with a kendo stick. Then she attacks the commentary team, smacks the crap out of Mina Shirakawa, who's on the commentary team with the kendo stick. Felt really mm. bad for Mina. Poor, poor Mina. Poor Mina. Um, and yeah, I then they find. It. Freaking mad when she got back on commentary too. And then they finally leave. I'm gonna give it to you, Mel, because <clears throat> yeah, um, yeah. Let's see. Um, Miu, Miu was the poor one. She was the fa- sh- sacrificial lamb in this one. Essentially, um, she was in there at the beginning, and she was in there at the end. And both times, she was, you know, sorry, getting her absolute shit wrecked. She. <clears throat> Uh, the, the whole thing with Dump just smacking her around like she was a pinata was just horrible. But, like, I felt so bad at one point because uh, Kyoko is, like, wandering around the stadium looking for her team because they all got tossed into the chairs. <laughs> at one point, she found Azumi and, like, did her best to drag her back. But, man... She, she, they both Azmi and Utami at that point were nowhere to be seen for a lot of the match. I don't even really have a whole lot on Azumi and Utami, um, in regards to them doing anything. Uh, the only thing I had with Azumi was poor Kyoko looking for other teammates, found Azumi, but was not useful. <laughs> like, um, yeah, and then I had the note. If Dump had gotten out of the ring, she probably wouldn't have been able to get back in. This poor woman. I mean, yeah, she's a legend, but she can barely walk. Yeah. There, let alone a, there, step there, in and out of the ring. There's I was surprised that she was able to swing the stick. Because, like, Kyoko, while older, was just fine. When she came in and did some work, she was great. Zap, when she was in doing work, she was great. It just Dump took a dump all over this match for me. And I, I, I hate saying it. Plastic. Yeah, but I, I, hate, I hate that I hate this match, but Dump was just such a big presence throughout this match and such a big presence in a bad way, and that's why I don't like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, Kyoko did fantastic in this match. She actually was reminding me of, like, a tame Ultimate Warrior. Like, she was doing so good, and she would get fired up, and she would... She's very, very agile, very, very movable still. Again, I forgot who Tommy was in this. I barely saw her. Mm-hmm. Um, Zap was also very impressive. Like, she was doing a lot of really good heavy lifting work when the rest of her team was kind of like, okay. I don't know what they were doing. This this one was okay for me in the beginning, but it, it did quickly break down for me once I realized that Dump wasn't getting out of the ring and, and she was just... It felt like she was only there for the pin breakup mm-hmm. to just run in and just whack somebody with the stick and like whack them all. Match doesn't end yet. A yuck. Um, 
it, it broke down a little too much into glorious, glorious chaos, but there was nothing really glorious about it. I say it sarcastically. It was um, just, uh, Ruaka, terrible, though. Terrible chaos. Yeah. Ruaka with that flying crossbody on the bottom rope, though, still something I really, really like. That's simple but effective. Um, she was re moving really fast in this match, which made me Whoa. very, very happy. Well, I know in comparison fast compared to her teammates. <laughs> Anybody, like, dude, I would look fast compared to her teammates. Come on. Yeah. But, like, Tora, Tora, Tora's pretty agile. And Zach Again. was moving pretty good. It just yeah, dumped, it, brings yeah. down the average. And, like, but I'll say this about her. Her eye makeup is fucking killer. She mm -hmm. has such a great look for what it is that she's supposed to be doing um the trash can spot also confounded me was that a trash can just a random trash can that she mm -hmm. just bonked on Mio's head poor Mio, just absolutely obliterated in this one um not impressed that they missed the mist like there's I mean, barely any mist on her face well, she had a bunch of red on her face after on her forehead okay but it got in the eye i got some got in the eyes it's red, it's down, red mist. It crawls down. Not it's up. red. It's red mist. It crawls down and goes into and crawls into the. It crawls. There was it's no crawling. Mist. The only crawling was bump after the match up the ramp. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna move on because yes, was, this one was fun. So if if you have that match and you put this one next, this feels like a match of the year contender, and we got an even better match in the main event. We so did. yeah, uh, we have Hazuki. Let's start, let's start it out. We have Cosmic Angels, Nats Boy, Sarah Ariano, and Tam Nakado taking on Hazuki, Shinobu Kandori, and Takako Inoue. God damn, it's hard to say. Takako. I, wanna say, I just want to say Takako. Um, uh, Shinobu is actually a politician um, now uh, with the Liberal Democratic Party in Japan. Um, no kidding. I don't know if she's still like actively doing it because she's 58 um wow. she's retired i think she's retired at this point but she went the same way as uh uh god damn it um enoki and got oh, into politics okay okay that yeah. that kind of makes sense with the the intro gear she had yeah so yeah again another woman who woman who wrestled a lot uh with all where she was a the great world single champion in uh, all Japan women's. Uh, she worked for Jap Japan Pro Wrestling, a uh, ladies' legend pro wrestling. Uh, again, she again, it's another legend in the business who I, I really did like. And she's had a mixed martial arts career. She fought in Rising, in uh, or she was supposed to fight in Rising, uh, but she didn't actually get the fight um, back in 2016, which would have been oh. she made her only. 51 when she was supposed to have that fight. So, like, again, um, she did some uh, mixed martial arts with Ladies of Legend Pro Wrestling back in the 90s when a lot of the promotions were doing the shoot fighting stuff. Uh, yeah, she had a couple fights back then. So, again, she's had quite a career. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Takako, in a way, uh, another another kind of legendary wrestler in uh, in the in the business. I worked for All Japan Women's and everything. And a lot of these women worked for All Japan Women because that was the promotion for them back in the day. Uh, she mm -hmm. did some work with Legends, uh, Ladies Legend Pro Wrestling. Uh, worked for uh, DDT. She is a former Ironman Heavy Metal Weight Champion. Um, work work uh, worked for Do Pro Wrestling Diana. Again, multiple championships in All Japan Women's back in the day. So again, like again, both very accomplished professional wrestlers mm -hmm. uh in legends in the business and these mm -hmm. two both held up quite well and did good did pretty damn good like i wouldn't say they were spectacular uh compared to what we got in the main event um but they were, did very good um mm -hmm. i enjoyed this match uh takako i'm just gonna i'm gonna end up calling her taco at some point i know that uh takako <laughs> comes in with a stick and the, like she's threatening and the ref has to take it away i was actually i really i found that quite funny um cosmic angels triple team takako with the splashes and the drop kicks um takako stops nats uh stomping on nat's face uh, then she has a stiff DDT, tags in Hazuki, does the boot wash in the ropes. Then she tags in uh, 
I, I wrote it as Shin for Shinobu because just was easier to type. Uh, she types in Shino, she brings in Shinobu uh, to headbutt Nat, and then she just headbutts the shit out of him. She's like one just hard headbutt. It looked great. Mm-hmm. Hits a tree slam. Nat comes fighting back with the cartwheel bomb. But it looked like Shinobu took a kind of a weird fall on it. But again, I don't think she was ready to take it. In this instance, again, probably in a move she's never taken before. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Shinobu gets a choke on Nat. Uh, then Sierra gets a choke on Shinobu. Uh, then Nat poses beside them. And then Takako gets a choke on uh, Sayori. And then Hazard comes in and chokes Nat. It's just a stupid fucking spot that Nat didn't try to break up Shinobu's choke. I don't understand that. This chick is fucked in the head. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Shinobu gets the Fujiwara armbar, but lets it go. Nat gets strikes. But Shinobu fights back, and then she does get the Fujiwara armbar, but it does get broken up. I think she's... I don't know her wrestling, what it was. I think she's famous for using the Fujiwara armbar back in the day. I think that's why everybody oh, reacted so big to it. Um, yeah. uh, Sayori and Takako uh, trade strikes and kicks, but Takako eventually drops it with a boot. Anu fights back, hits the bridging fisherman suplex for two, but Takako gets up, hits the spinning back fist, but that pin is broken up by broken up and Anu hits an Enziguri and another fisherman suplex. Uh team has, I'm gonna call them when they're group, all get rear naked chokes and Hazuki has it in deep on net, but Nat does get the rope. But attack but has hits the full dust and slam in the sent on for two. Has a Nat trade strikes. Has goes crazy on Nat dropping her, but Nat gets a, her, a couple spin kicks and a release German. Nat goes up, but then we get a big ass six person tower of doom with Nat taking the worst of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Shinobu gets a swinging rear naked choke on Nat, and Takako hits the backdrop driver. Hazuki gets the top ropes, and then and I thought it was over, but it wasn't. Uh, uh Nat gets the ferial, the ferial ring onto Hazuki, then Tam gets the cutter, and they're and they're then they get a triple down kick thing by uh, like triple axe kick thing that Cosmic mm-hmm. Angels does uh, to all of Team Hazuki. To Team Hazuki. Uh, Sayori hits the drop kick to Haz. Then Tam gets the knee off the top. Then the fairy the fairy splash, flipping splash, but it gets broken up. The pin. Uh, Shinobu accidentally hits ha- Hazuki when she's trying to German, when Hazuki's trying to German net. And Nat gets to roll around the ring into the pin for the win. Yeah. I wasn't expecting, uh, based on the beatdown that Hazuki was giving Poi at the end there, I wasn't expecting her to uh, be able to pick up the win, but she kind of went, you know, found that dark fairy kind of thing, energy there to kind of pull that off. Um, I kind of felt that uh, Takako was what Natsupoi should be with her outfit. Very black and dark and um fun and stuff like that um i really really actually enjoyed takako and i felt that she was in there for quite a bit of the match um doing a lot of great work with anu which is not something i thought i was gonna say in some time um but i don't know if it was that she was in with a legend and she knew it or if she's just finding that personality, but I I was seeing facial expressions and like emotion on the face of Sayorianu. And it was nice to see someone getting that emotion out of her. Um, She was very, very impassioned when they were trading those uh, boot strikes. Um, back and forth, the, the pumping boot strikes that they were doing. I really, really enjoyed that as something so simple, but it made it, it set up a pace for the rest of the match for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Takako's spinning back fist is just Kenta level. Gosh dang, that thing looks like it hurts. Um, Shinobu's gear is tremendous. She reminds me of a Dragon Ball Z character. Like, it looks like a Dragon Ball Z singlet to me. And mm-hmm. I love it. Um, especially because she was she was so strong. Like, her headbutts were incredible. Uh, very, very talented wrestler. I really enjoyed watching her. I know this. She's a legend. She, she's retired, you said, right? Mm-hmm. That's unfortunate. I would love to see her more. She looks like she can still go 
at, at 53, you said? Uh, Takako is 53. Uh, Shinobu is 58. Around there, I think. 58? No way. For Sh no Shinobu. Way. Shinobu is 58, yes. She don't look it. And she don't move like it. Gosh dang. Teach me your Shinobu secrets, Kandori, woman. 58 years old, yep. Wow. I mean, goddamn woman. I'm 39. Okay. I can barely move that way. Um, normally, I love um, Tam Nakano and her, her offense, but her spin kicks in this one got to Young Buck super kick level for me. Uh, they were just happening too much. They, they almost became a regular strike. And I get it. She's a small girl. You're contending with someone like, especially like Shinobu, who's quite a bit bigger than, than Tom. But mm -hmm. Tom's also tiny. Um, I, I just, I felt she could have did something different. She's capable of better. She's the red belt champion. She she earned that belt from Julia. You know, Julia is known for her strikes. And she didn't have to do the roundhouse kicks like that to Julia. I don't think she she didn't need to do it to Shinobu. Um, but yeah, the finish of the match, like I mentioned, Hazuki just going absolutely feral on the back of Natsupoi's head, just drilling her with those endless forearms. I honestly thought that that was going to be the end. I thought she was going to follow it up and it would be done. And I was very surprised when Poi suddenly came back and ended the match. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, kind of is. Mm-hmm. Move on to the main event. Uh, God damn, this was a good match. And I, this was 27 minutes. Um, so I'm not going through everything because shit. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I took a lot of notes, but I'm going to be skipping a bunch of them because I'd be here for another 20 minutes just talking about this. Give us um, the good ones. Nani's gear looked amazing, by the way. Yes. Um, just loved it. Uh, Starlight Kid attacks for the bell. Her and Nakanishi have a great, great. Whenever her and Nakanishi were in the ring, Straight up fire. Uh, Jaguar. Uh, Jaguar Yakota. Uh, 62 years old. Shut up. What? Not even joking. 62 years old. How do these women be almost double my age and moving better than me? Uh, God damn. Steroids? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Obesity. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, another women woman who's like all Japan women, all Japan women champion, all Japan women junior champion, uh, again, multiple other championships in the company. Uh, she has the Guinness World Record for oldest female pair to win a professional tag team wrestling championship this year with uh, Mayumi Ozaki. Wow. Holy crap. And it's it is the World Woman Pro Wrestling Diana uh, Elizabeth World Elizabeth Championship, which is the uh, uh, no, sorry, that is the uh, tag team title. Um, yeah, and then she is the current the current uh, World Woman Pro Wrestling Diana uh, World Elizabeth Champion, which is a secondary title in that company, um, and then. She, Ooh. The title she won this year to become the oldest to win a tag title was the Oz Academy Tag Team Championships with me and me and Zaki. Wow. 62? Jesus. Yeah. So, Jesus. again, really, really good. Really, really good. Worked really well in this match. Uh, wow. Nakanisha getting a beautiful camel clutch on Starlight Kid and her team poses behind her. Hell, yeah. Jaguar hitting a pile driver on Starlight Kid. And then just stands up and does the cocky pin for two. Like, yeah. I, I was just mean. Like, I was just mean. Um, Starlight Kid with a beautiful mm -hmm. springboard cross in the standing moonsault to Jaguar for a two. Uh, then Yu comes in and she hits the senton to Jaguar. Uh, <laughs> Nakanishi trying to German Yu but can't. And she gets splashed into the corner by sent to the corner. And she gets splashed in the corner by Yu. Yu gets two, but she stopped on the second rope attempt. Nakanishi tries to superplex, but cannot because she's way too small. So Nana comes up and she suplexes her tag team partner. That was that wasn't cool. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, Momo Watanabe in. She's unloading kicks to Nakanishi. Starlight Kid hits a six one nine. Nakanishi gets a roll up on Watanabe until Starlight Kid breaks it up and Watanabe gets some kicks, to, some PKs to her. Um, wrist clutch lariats by Nane to Starlight Kid, but she misses in the corner and she gets triple teamed. Starlight Kid hits the twisting frog splash for a two. Um, 
Nana and Nakanini, she te- double team Starlight Kid, but Starlight Kid gets saved by you. Uh, Starlight Kid hits the Asai Moonsault to everybody on the floor. Uh, then you get the triple stink face, and then the du- to to uh, the other opposing team, but she hit. She only gets the double cannonball to Nana and Nakanishi. and then Momo Watanabe hits the Dude Buster, and Starlight Kid hits the Moonsault to Nane, but she only gets two. End of the match comes Fisherman Suplex by Nane. But the pin gets broken up. Jaguar uh, Yakota takes out what Momo Watanabe with the bat. And Starlight Kid gets the roll up on Nani for two. Then Jaguar hits the flip double leg drop uh, to Starlight Kid. And Nani and Nakanishi hit a double razor's edge to Starlight Kid. And Nani gets the win. Gets, she gets her revenge, too, by getting her win back on Starlight Kid. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Poor Starlight Kid. Poor Starlight Kid. In she this got match. her ass kicked. I, I was going to say, I wrote down a Drake quote. Got a lot of enemies. A lot of enemies. A lot of people trying to take her energy. Like, gosh, dang woman. Everyone on Nani's team was taking their shots. <laughs> they were not happy with her. But, you know, she held up well. I mean, and maybe that's the uh, the Oedo Tai kind of... You know, thing in there. I don't know. Maybe it's just who Starlight Kid is. I think that's probably more likely. Um, Nane really, really did take it to Starlight Kid, though. Like the 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 buildup that these two did for this match was just poof, tremendous. Um, the triple stack uh, clutch was hilarious. Where I think it was Nane got the clutch on. No, uh, Nak- uh, Nakanishi got the clutch. Nakanishi. Okay, yeah. And they, where they had the three of them, and they're just sitting there like, yay! I was just like, ah, oh, that's very Oedo Tai of you. Um, they they kind of switch back and forth in this um, match. But, you know, it was very obvious that Team Nane was was the, the faces in this one. Um, I really enjoyed Nakanishi's little pin attempt on you. I think you mentioned that, where that, that fun, twisty neck mm-hmm. pin thing that that she taught Starlight Kid. Um, mm-hmm. Attempting it on you was just hilarious. Um, mm-hmm. I was like, girl, what did you, what, what did you expect that would result in? You got yeeted for your troubles. Um, I felt like Momo Watanabe was actually sporting some new gear. Maybe I just haven't noticed that the butt tassels, but the butt tassels seemed new. Um, I liked it. I thought that the gear looked really, really great on her. The purple in her hair is looking really nice. Um, and I felt that she was especially vicious in in this match um, against Nani and Jaguar, especially. Um, her kicks are just... Ouch. Mm-hmm. And that bat is just a pain in the ass. <sighs> I, I, I can't imagine that feels great. Um, last thing I have written down is, is this, the double machine gun chop that Starlight Kid was having to pull out on Nani, where instead of doing the one, she was... That's comparable to what I would be doing <laughs> in that situation. That's how a male ball fights. It's just all hands. Um, yeah, this match was utterly incredible. What a great way to end the show. And then to end it with Nane just riling the crowd up even more with her just charisma on mic. It was just so nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely tremendous match, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll admit I didn't watch the post match stuff. I'll admit that I didn't. <laughs> Nani caught an amazing promo. She got the crowd fire up. She had them chanting passion. She's like, "I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna keep going." I, I was but, very excited. But to me, the most person I was most impressed by was Jag- Jaguar Yakota, dude, sixty two years old <laughs> and doing as well as she did. Yeah. Oh, but, like, yeah. And, that, and that's a pure contrast to Dump Matsumoto, who's sixty three. And can't couldn't do shit like so. I mean, if that can be an example of anything, it would be the different wrestling styles. It's obvious that that um, that dump was in a very different kind of wrestling style, but also maybe took care of herself in a little bit different way than mm-hmm. than Jaguar did. Whereas Jaguar is very obvious; she was a more of an aerialist, but also more of a technician. So mm-hmm. she's probably not taking as many bumps and and her joints are probably doing a lot better <laughs> like, than um 
Yeah, I I would love to see Jay Jaguar come back for some more matches. Same with the girls. Hell the yeah. Ladies in the last match. Hell, Hell yeah. Like, could you imagine a one on one match between Jaguar and Tom Nakano? No, I want Jaguar versus Starlight Kid in a straight up one on one match. That would be okay. That would be okay. But I wouldn't mind seeing uh, Tom or even Julia. Hmm. A lot, lot of good people for her to face. Oh, the list would be endless. <laughs> But we have come to an end for another episode of Stardom Review. I want to thank all of you for joining us. Uh, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below because we love hearing from you. That's one of our favorite things is just getting to talk with you guys on in the in the com in the comments section down below and hit the notification bell to be alerted. When do you want to be alerted? Every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Hello, shout out to Bailey. Uh, <laughs> We're going to get out of here. But before we do, we're going to say our goodbyes. And I want to say, I am. you can find me on X, Mastodon, Blue Sky, and Hive at That Canada Guy. You can find me on TikTok, Instagram, and Threads at That Canada Dude. Uh, you can find me on our Facebook page, Facebook page and, at Andre Melball Wrestling Talk. You can find me over there. Uh, just message us there and you can get a hold of me or in the comments down below. Uh, you can also find me over at randomly whenever I pop up doing weird ass shit on our local establishment. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna randomly just show up on a show dumb day and just do something weird. It's gonna happen at uh, twitch.tv slash our local establishment. Also on uh, youtube.com slash at our local establishment. If you want to see my uh, recap from or my previous show from what we did for me and Mike Mike's choice or picks for all in, you can check that out over at youtube.com slash at Backburger Video. If you want to see his live content, it's twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref and all his great gaming content is replayed at youtube.com slash at Backbreaker underscore gaming. We can find him, Mr. PJC, Mr. Rick Jules, and their frequent guest, Miss Kayla J. Kayla J. Love Kayla J. Melball. Yes. Okay, interesting. Cute puppies, eh? She does. She has little dashes. I know, but in the world of professional wrestling, puppies mean something very different. Come on now. We're not in the Attitude Era anymore. Melbourne, where can they find you? You can find a Melbourne on the X thing at Collins Melbourne. You can find her on everything else. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Blue Sky Mastodon <laughs> at Melwall Collins. You can also catch her on our local establishment there on Para Mindful with Alex the Werewolf and the gold standard Carl Carufel. We actually just recorded an episode like an hour before I got on here with my wonderful friend here on our first spooky season video. That's going to be about the least exciting cryptid thing to me, which is vampires. If you know, you know. That'll be coming out on Monday. I didn't know they were they were spooky. I thought they just sparkled. We're going to say that they do. <laughs> you can also find me on Astro Pizarro's YouTube channel where we have our episodes of our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. We're going to be dropping another episode finally. Friday. It's been busy. Well, we're going to hope so because poor Astrid is in Florida right now and she is getting, she's getting a storm. It, it's a little, there's a little bit of a sprinkle. There's a little bit of a storm there. So we're going to hope that it doesn't destroy the mainland. So she's getting Florida. <laughs> yeah, very much so. <laughs> and I think that is everything. Oh, if you're wanting to watch Stardom World, you can, well, like you are Stardom Wrestling, you can go to stardom-world.com. It is approximately 999 yen or approximately $10 US, Shadow Sean Spears, but it's actually more like 715 American. So it depends on what your dollar, euro, whatever else you're using um, is at that time. But for me, it was only 730, I think, this year or this month. Anyway, it's a great opportunity for you to watch some amazing professional wrestling, both of right now and of the past. If you go back into their data banks there, you can probably see some familiar faces from WWE specifically. So you'll want to go do that. That being said, my friend, do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? Thank you for tuning in. Oh, short, sweet, to the point. That being said, I am your Melville. Over there is on. Right. We will see you next time. Mwah!